Hi guys, my name is Chandler North. I'm here today to share some inside secrets on how to play defense in grass volleyball triples. To me, I believe there are four levels and complexities of defenses in grass volleyball triples. First, alignment. Second, disguise. Third, optimize. And fourth, read defense. Let's talk about this first defensive strategy in a little bit more detail. Historically, there were two calls. There was blocking line and there was blocking angle. You could call one for line, two for angle. And there were pros and cons to this. One is it was simple. You were likely all on the same page. You could all be in the right spot. Um, you could be there early, you could be set. So defenders weren't gonna be late in moving. They could be balanced and ready to go in both directions. It allowed your blocker to be exactly lined up on the hitter for what their call was. So um, alignment was a very effective strategy. It got you all on the same page, but it was susceptible um, and had some cons to it. So um, it didn't put a ton of stress or pressure on the offense. Um, they really only had to make one read. They could look at the middle back defender or the blocker and they would know exactly where to rip the ball low to challenge the defenders and how to shoot the ball high or where the open court was uh, with a controlled shot in order to uh, avoid the defense. So uh, with that, defenses had to adopt. They had to disguise themselves. So added to the defensive strategies, uh, not only just line and cross, there was a disguised line and a disguised cross. So um, here's what they would look like. What this allowed you to do on defense is make a split time decision or force the offense to make a split time decision um, and put a lot of stress in them. That's where they're prone to errors. That's where they might rip the ball low and put it in the wrong spot to where the blocker can get an effective block kill or touch. And they might shoot the ball right to where the defender is, is now uh, running because they can't see exactly what the defense is. So those are the first two. All right, let's talk about that third tier of defense, that defensive strategy of optimizing. So whenever I think of this defensive strategy, I think mathematically of what's the best efficiency in the long run, what statistics are gonna lead to success um, in the long run. So um, in order to do that, I'll make a little, some general assumptions. So in grass volleyball, the court is huge. There's tons of court to cover. So the advantage goes to the offense. They can default and hit to a lot of open space. So in general, sign out percentages might be above or higher than 66%. So if you're able to limit or get seven chances on defense, you should be okay in terms of having a good chance to win. So in order to do that, your job is to find opportunities that lead to sign out percentages less than 50% and avoid situations that the offense would be in the advantage of side outs greater than 66%. So in order to break this one down, let's, uh, let's make an assumption that um, defender in green is a good defender, bad defender here and a good defender here, where rather than one third, one third, one third, my good defender is taking 40, 50% of the court and my weaker defender is taking maybe 20% of the court. As a block, I can manipulate my setup to um, think the hitter has something available and force them to hit it at, at my good defender. So maybe if I was doing the, the angle block, um, I could, if my good defender was down the line and my bad defender was angle, I could show that line is open and then move even further, shift my block even further in so that they have to hit at my good defender. Now I can do this both with deception, a move, or I can do it in terms of how I line up against the hitter. Um, just in terms of percentages then, I give my good defender a chance to make um, higher plays at the ball. Now, this is great if people's shot charts were exactly even. Let's say the spray chart of the hitter was in the meat of the court, was good for the offense, and if they swing towards the sidelines, um, it's good for the defense. But this isn't realistic. This isn't your average hitter. Some hitters are strong on the angle. Other hitters are strong on the line. So you as a defense 
have to do not only the alignment for yourselves, but do it against the hitter's preferences, tendencies, and whatnot. So often when you see the strategy of optimization, you see high level players execute this, you'll see, well, on a fast set, they're a good hitter down the line, but on a, on a system set from off the net, they really only hit angle. So my percentages of where are, where, what court we're gonna protect and what we're gonna give up um, shifts depending on what's going on across the net. So um, that at a high level describes the third level of defense, optimizing. So I want to go through two more examples of high level optimized defenses. The first is the power guy. He can swing with range from here to here and get around one blocker um, and hit with high efficiency advantage to the offense in both angle and cross or uh, line. So um, two different ways to defend this. Um, if you have double blockers to take away someone who's power and low to the net with range, uh, that can be an effective strategy. The other way is to almost act as a double blocker yourself with the split block call. Now, what this would look like is the blocker would separate one left hand out, taking away low angle, and his right hand out to take away low line. And what ends up opening up is the middle of the court. But people are scared to go low. That's where your head is. That's where the chance of me reaching back into the court as a split blocker to touch the ball or potentially get him. Uh, by making a read. So your defender back here is really just gonna sit around in really deep six, ready to cover this ball that comes through. So uh, often you'll drop the other blocker off the net and sip around in deep six. And it allows you to play the tendencies of the hitter with only one blocker. Now, the other one I wanna talk about is the all cross guy. They can beat it low through the tape. They can go high OT. They can contact the ball just too high for the block to get. So even in deep angle, they're scoring at advantage offense. Now, the best way I think to defend this is to triple up on angle or do a read defense where your blocker might really take anywhere from here to here or anywhere in between and it's on the blocker to cover this much range with power. So they might line up in the angle and leave line. We're just daring this guy to hit line. And if he turns, if he shows it, um, then I might separate out my hands and protect the low line or uh, reach outside my body line because me as the blocker is responsible for the line. And if he has no interest going line or he's just going to continue to play the odds and go cross it's okay in this instance to really triple up on the angle a blocker angle a digger behind the block or super deep and a digger in the in the ninja angle or sharp and through the tape so that's a way to take away the pref uh, preferences and statistics behind the all cross guy now going into detail about this last one the the re defense um, it's a really risky defense. Um, it allows or puts your team at risk of not being on the same page. And maybe you triple up on the angle and they can just have a clean kill or easy point dinking down the line. Or um, you as a blocker are making a late move that opens up just a sliver of court that the digger didn't know you were gonna do that. So they were reading something else. And now all of a sudden um, the advantage goes to the offense because um, if, if they were deceptive, or um, clunky and, or, or really creative, let's say they're like Ryan Amdahl with his Crocs and his windmill swing, or they're goofy footed and really hard to read. Now you're putting a lot of stress on yourself as a defense uh, to make the right plays. But I do wanna speak about this one in a little bit more detail in that if you go watch on a system or the semis and finals at, at Wapaka Boat Ride or grass triple at its highest level, um, in order to take away the primary shot or in order so that when you do get your one chance, you do have them hit it right at you, you're exactly there, you're, you're reading the spin of the ball, you know it's gonna be spatchy, you know it's gonna be steep. Um, it allows you to have a higher conversion uh, percentage. So let's say I was gonna mix in one dive block uh, in, the, in, the, in the set, in the one game to 21, um, well, now I'm doing it strategically. I'm doing it at the time that 
I think is most effective or puts me at the highest percentage chance to get a block kill. Or, or me as a digger is I'm roaming all the way to the line or staying super neutral in six. Um, it, now when I read it correctly, I'm going to convert it. So um, reading maybe gives you less chances, but it gives you a better chance to convert it. So rather than just touching it as a block or just touching it as a digger, now you have a better chance of controlling it and making the offense pay for it. So those are my four levels of defense, alignment, disguise, optimize, and read. And I truly, truly believe that 90 plus percent of your defense can be done in zones one, two, and three. And reading um, is when done correctly or at the highest levels, um, really unstoppable as an offense when someone has a good read on you. So I'll end with one story. Um, Tyler and I argue a lot about who deserves the credit for uh, being good on defense. So me as a blocker, I operate very statistically. I, I live in space three of, you know, it was my move, my last hand movement that really opened up or I gave you 60% of the court and Ian or whoever was setting 10% of the court and I made them hit it to you. And, and Tyler would flip and he'd go, well, no, I was reading the arm swing. I saw their wrist. So I was in exactly the right position. So um, are we both wrong? Are we both correct? Um, I truly believe we're both correct in that sense. And, and that's what it takes to be, to great, to be great in the league and, and why players that um, like Tyler or EJ or Beezer who have a really strong ability in read have been a really strong pair with me and that um, if I can put together a really good strategy or alignment um, and optimize it based on certain things and, and kind of cue them up of what types of balls to come through, uh, it gives them a, a really good opportunity to make a read and make a play. So um, that's how to play brass volleyball triples defense.